Isolated tornadoes, damaging winds, small hail, and even flooding today. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pew. Today is July 11, 2025, and I'm finally getting severe weather. Shout out to Chicago, but also sorry. Today we have a slight risk or a two out of five in the Midwest and a little bit in the central high plains, and we have a marginal risk stretching from Michigan all the way down to New Mexico and even in the upper Midwest. The main hazard today is that we may have a couple isolated tornadoes from eastern Iowa all the way to Chicago. In addition to that, we may see winds greater than 60 miles per hour and maybe even small hail, though there's more risks for the hail development to happen when the storms start initiating. The Weather Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for the Midwest and the Central High Plains, and these areas have already been seeing a lot of rain in the last 24 hours. And so in the next 24 hours, some of these places may see one to two or maybe even more inches of rain. Starting with the Midwest, it looks like storms are going to start appearing in Iowa as early as 9 a.m. Central Time. And these storms are going to track eastward, and they're going to start intensifying around 18z or 1 p.m. Central Time. And the same thing could be said about the upper Midwest. We're going to see storms start appearing in places like Minnesota around 1 p.m. Central Time as well. For the Central Plains, High Plains, and places like New Mexico, expect to see something around 21Z or around 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Looking at 500 millibars or midway through the troposphere, it looks like we have two troughs and both of them have really good jet streaks. These jet streaks are going to provide good shear, which is going to tilt those updrafts and prolong those storms that do develop. Looking at the exit region of these jet streaks, you can see the isobars kind of spreading out a little bit. And what that means is when the air aloft is spread out, that allows for Earth to just kind of fill in that space, thus increasing upward motion. But if we look at the left left exit region of this jet tree, you can see that the wind barbs are kind of moving away from each other. And that means exactly what we talked about with the isobars spreading out. When the wind spread out, then the air aloft spreads out, which is going to allow more upward motion to fill in that gap. Taking a look at that theoretical sounding on the border of Iowa and Illinois, we can look at the wind barbs right here. That's going to tell us the wind speed and wind direction. So if we look at the surface, we can see that the winds start more like southeasterly and then very quickly turn more southwesterly. And that's what we call winds veering with height or winds going clockwise as it goes up. And that's really significant especially from the surface of the one kilometer range because that's a really good minimum requirement for tornadic activity. It's essentially adding more spin to the updraft which is going to enhance those thunderstorms. If we took a look at satellite imagery we can see clear skies in the upper midwest, central plains, and high plains but not so much in the midwest. You see clouds are starting to break up in Iowa and Illinois and that's not a really good sign because if there's more daytime heating then that means more instability and more energy for these storms. Taking a look at the surface we have a stationary front in the midwest but there's actually a hidden forcing. So last night the plains had an MCS or mesoscale convective system or basically big blob of a thunderstorm and what's happening is that dumped a lot of cool air into the ground and it's now creating an outflow boundary and we can see this happening in a temperature map notice the gradient between the warmer air and the colder air is a lot more drastic in this area that outflow boundary layer is basically going through and mixing the air and also kind of acting like a little mini cold front and then for the upper midwest central plains in New Mexico there's going to be a cold front that's going to be passing through and that's going to provide surface lifts and that's why today we have 